All right, but now that we've run everybody out in the yard with that, uh, hopefully good news all around at the end of it. Let's go to some more news, period. I don't know whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, but Lufisto made accusations. Am I, am I phrasing this right? Lufisto made accusations on a series of tweets on Twitter, or formerly Twitter, now X, that indicated that all was not sunshine, lollipops, rainbows, and waterfalls with the AEW women's locker room. And the AEW women's locker room have fired back to say, no, no, and it, that everything is all good there. And probably the truth lies somewhere maybe in between, but we're going to try to figure out pointing toward which direction. As I said earlier at the program, we're not on anybody's side. Have we ever met any of these people? I've, I've met Thunder Rosa a few times. Well, Dustin uh, Rhodes well, is involved. Well, oh, I forgot about uh, Dustin's involved, but he's not in the women's locker room, at least as far as we know. Hi, um, I'm the new woman wrestler here. I'll be in the, <laughs> I'll be in the corner. No, he's not, no, he's not in the women's locker room, no. It's Jethro Bodine's cousin, Jethreen. It's Dustin and Dustreen. Um... But anyway, I've, we've never met Lefisto. We don't know these people, but they have widely varying views of the atmosphere over there. Brian, can you add any context or chronological order to this conflict? I can try, and there's a lot going on, and it is because I, I will say one thing: we don't know if Lufisto is the is the soul of honesty, but we know she is not the soul of brevity. <laughs> there was a lot to unpack in the series of tweets. Well, I think we have to, to start it, go back a step. There's been so much talk about the women's division in AEW, about some people think Tony not using them right, not using them enough. They're not used enough on these two-hour shows. There are people that think the women's division doesn't seem to be getting better. And then some of those people will point to, well, they're not used enough. But there's been a series of issues. How is, how is, how is more poisonous food better? And a lot of these issues came up, what was it, a week and a half ago or so, the Britt baker Talia valkyrie match on Dynamite, which completely fell apart. And it's one of a series of matches with Britt Baker where she seemed, she just didn't seem to know what to do or things went wrong. And I hate to say it, but Taya Valkyrie too, there's not really been a shining moment in AEW so far. It's been the opposite. Yeah. yeah. So there's been all this talk about it at the end of that match. There was a fan in the crowd. I think the sign was book the women's division better or something. You and, and you know, here's the, just not to derail you, but real briefly, Taya and Britt have been better with other people. Sometimes it's not even a style clash. It's a, an emotional clash. If you're not motivated to really work with that person, whether you're trying or not, sometimes it doesn't come off. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So again, coming out of that match and a fan holding up a sign at the end of a really bad match saying that they need to do more with the women's division, the fact that the women's division typically almost every week is the segment that drives off viewers from AEW TV, it's not even fair to compare the AEW women's division to the WWE women's division. Not that everyone there is great, but it's just no comparison. So in the midst of all of that, Lufisto who's been a women's wrestler on the indies for a number of years. I'm not too familiar with her work. I know she's in one of the indie Hall of Fames. So she's been out there for a while. Oh, she, it's uh, like 20 years, I think. She tweeted out, coming out of that Britt Baker, Taya Valkyrie match. Britt Baker. Britt Baker, Britt, Taya. Britt, Britt, Britt Baker? Britt, Britt Baker. Baker. Hello, Kevin Sullivan. Britt Baker. Britt Baker, Taya Valkyrie match. Uh, here's what Lou Fisto tweeted out. It's cute how people blame booking for a bad women's division. Talent with too much power. Talent denigrating each other. Talent trash-talking potential employees so they never get in as soon as they walk in. It starts here. And then she signed it. The one you called effin' French-Canadian asshole. <laughs> Apparently she had worked... Previously, a dark match for AEW. In now, to be, to be perfectly fair, there are many French-Canadian assholes. I bet even the French-Canadian people know a bunch of them. Well, actually, I believe 
it later came out. She did a long interview with Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful. And the text is up there. I tried to watch the video. It went long. So I tapped out. But I think she says Dustin Rhodes said that to her. But he blamed it on hating French Canadians due to being around Jacques Rougeau. <laughs> and I'm not even joking. I believe that was the explanation. <laughs> Now, do you understand it a little better, the comments? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I needed that. <laughs> well, of course, then obviously everybody understands where he's coming from. No, we love you, Jacques. You're, you're, Jacques is an endearing asshole. He's, he was one of the French Canadians with personality that's also an asshole. I always thought smarmy Jacques Rougeau was such an effective heel. Yes. But uh, I have an article here. This is from Wrestle Talk. So they're saying, Lufisto worked one show for AEW, that being an AEW Dark Elevation taping in April 2022, where she teamed with Emi Sakura and The Bunny in a loss to Anna Jay, Ruby Soho, and Sky Blue. God, I wonder how many stars that one got. So after her tweet, Sean Ross Sapp was asked to comment on it. Yes, there is truth to it. There's somebody that tried to hold her, Lufisto, down, that trash-talked about her. There's a lot of trash-talking within that locker room. It's something that I've constantly heard about over the last couple of years. I can't point fingers and say who. A lot of people pointed the finger at Britt Baker and said, you talk trash about Thunder Rosa. Listen, there's a lot of it that goes on there. I will say this about Britt. Britt experienced some stuff that nobody should ever have to go through. And I understand why she's got her guard up in that sense. Well, wait, hold it. Pump the brakes. I don't what? know. I, before you even ask, I have no idea what was that's she referencing. Was she a fucking uh, encapsulated in a prisoner of war camp? What is she? I... Maybe she was worried about getting a shoot drop kick to the back of the head. But Well, more on that later. But but no, But I mean, she's she's a dentist. She appears to have graduated from a an institution of higher learning. She's a highly paid professional wrestler on television i'm sure she had to pay her dues and take a lot of bumps in small buildings but has she been somehow drug across broken glass that we're not aware of that something in her that she's had to overcome why so cryptic i don't know and i should point out here because i just saw it this past week Britt baker announced that she's cut back on her dentistry work she's focusing more on the wrestling now less on the dentistry she said that that's Something that can make your body, your neck and back as sore as wrestling. Yes, and then she's still got to decide by next year whether she wants to continue as a double-knot spy. Well, let me continue on here with Sean Ross Sapp. But the Lufisto thing, Lufisto, among people that work with her and have worked with her, she just holds some of the highest respect. And there was a not-so-good situation that I am of the belief emerged from a ton of miscommunication that didn't help her out when she came in there. Because it was supposed to be for a lot more than what she was brought in and ended up doing. At least as it was relayed to me and relayed to her, and I mean this from the April show last year where she worked dark. Uh, me, Who is writing this, by the way? Well, th this is actually, it's a transcription of Sean Ross Sapp. Oh, okay. I would say if, if somebody was writing this, they're trying not only to torture, but to mutilate the syntax. They were talking to her, according to Lou Fisto, and according to what Sean Ross Sapp reports here, that he said as he heard independent of her, they talked to her, according to her interview, by bringing her in as a coach. And I believe she said that QT Marshall said, you need blood work and you need a COVID test. She said, I can't have any of those in time for the taping. And they said, it doesn't matter, just come anyway. <laughs> and when she got there, according to an interview she did, and again, it's on Fightful, uh, Fightful Selector, Fightful, I'm not sure, but they have the video up, the interview. She makes it sound like she got there and was immediately greeted with, why are you here? What are you doing here? <laughs> people ignoring her, people being cold to her. So it's a whole thing, but that interview came out of, let me go here, because there's so many different things that happened. Actually, first, to show you Britt Baker's response, I guess a fan, I don't know who this is, Develop a performance center for wrestlers like Britt Baker so they improve their craft. She was horrible last night, and she wants to face the Queen Charlotte Flair one day? Please laugh out loud. Please, girl. I don't know who this person is, but Britt Baker found this and replied, 
Sorry, sis. I couldn't hear you over those DMD chants. But bullying looks just as good on you as that heinous yellow dress. Uh, she was wearing a yellow dress, this fan who tweeted this out <laughs> in the photo. <laughs> And then there's an emoji of, I don't even know how to describe this. It's a face, but like the smile's all like up and down, like wavy. And is the person supposed to be high? I don't know what this face is, but. You know, I've got to admit when I'm wheeling through the Twitter, every once in a while, some smart ass will say something that I just have to respond to just to, you know, just to do it. But it sounds like she takes this shit as more than a, a fucking game we play. Wouldn't we want to say, I hate you? Well, coming out of all that, Ufisto had a series of tweets. Had a one-hour phone call with a current AEW talent. The women who actually addressed the problems I did today were the ones sent home by Tony Khan. There was a meeting to shoot on Thunder Rosa that Tony Khan attended. Before leaving, he reminded them that their segments were the lowest. When some girls arranged a meeting to talk about Baker's crew, one of them ran the Brit to let her know. The girls that wanted to address the problem were the girls punished. Things didn't get better. They got worse. That, that's her, uh, I think she means worse, but yes. they got worse. The legitimate wrestlers believe Tony doesn't give a damn about women's wrestling and feel like they are going back to the Divas era. Ask me who the fuck I am. Tell me I'm irrelevant and that I'm doing this for attention. Call me a liar. Tell me to kill myself. You keep on closing your eyes and supporting human beings with shitty behavior. With the messages of support, and especially this phone call I received from the AEW employees, this nobody did the right thing. And then uh, she put up a picture of herself. See, a lot of pronouns, pal. I get confused when I don't know exactly who is on it, because apparently there's a lot of people on a lot of people's side around here. And so that, that uh, we can tell that there's strife. There's heartache by the numbers and uh, a, lot of, a lot of mean girls in the locker room. But then, again, everybody was on Thunder Rosa here a while back, and, and we were like, Jesus Christ, why are they fucking you know, being so mean to Rosa and what did she do? And she's proven that she really had a back injury or whatever. And then we saw this clip of her dropping in from a fucking helicopter to give Jamie Hayter brain damage. And I'm <laughs> like, well, fuck, that would goddamn, that would get my attention as to somebody I'd like to have a word with. Do you, where did that come from? Was that when she was allegedly hiding in the bathroom? Again, there's so many weird stories, and, you know, now we'll talk about them in a moment. The AW women's locker room is trying to pretend like everything's just wonderful. We've heard stories in the past. We just never dig into it because it's the women's locker room. But apparently Thunder Rosa had a lot of heat. We had heard in the past that some wrestlers didn't believe she had a back injury. Other wrestlers thought it was convenient that she worked through her back injury until she was told she was going to drop the belt. And then there was a story that at one point she hid in the bathroom because of something, and some people were saying it's because of this missile shoot drop kick to the back of Jamie Hayter's head. It looks like Hayter has no idea this is coming. What? No, it don't look like that. No, I can guarantee goddamn tea you. Well, here's the thing. When you had told me, did you see the clip of this drop kick? I'm thinking drop kick. There's somebody standing there and somebody else is drop kicking him. That doesn't do this justice. Apparently, Jamie Hayter is covering somebody else for a, a pin cover and suddenly into the shot from the air, like from off the ropes or somewhere, the ring lights high above, both of fucking Thunder Rosa's feet come down on the back of Jamie Hayter's fucking head and just propel her face into the goddamn mat. It looks like a America's Funniest Home Video. Of, you know, of, of a safe falling on somebody's head. It looks like you're trying to hurt someone. Whether you are or aren't, that's what it looks like. God damn it, it didn't start out that way. It, it looks like the decision was made in midair. Well, I'm either going to hurt myself or them, so fuck them. Because whoever was underneath that, it wasn't comfortable. Because the rest of her ass and everything fell on the goddamn both the bodies. So again, there's the issue where Thunder Rosa has had heat with the locker room. Thunder Rosa has not been around. She was last shown on Dynamite 
going into Tony Khan's <laughs> locker room and we never saw her again. Wait, 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 you know what happened though, don't you? No. I'll tell you, as soon as she went in the locker room, Tony wished her into the cornfield. <laughs> what? He, he got mad as she was either singing or she said something that he didn't like and he wished her into the cornfield. Well, we will. That's why we haven't seen her. Well, we will see. She's still. He could have uh, made her. He could have made her a jack in the box head. So at least the cornfield was more more humane. Well, after all of this controversy, Lufisto did a long interview, as I mentioned earlier, with Sean Ross Sapp at Fightful. That caused, in very short order, almost at the same time, seemingly the entirety of the women's locker room in AEW tweeting out messages. Let me go through these. And by the way, the, 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 the young girls these days, they're all texting each other, right? That's what they do on their phones. They text each and they influence each other. They become influencers. Well, it's not just young people. Everyone's texting. And I mean, well, but I mean, the, it's, it's the young girls that actually it's important <laughs> to them. And they're all always texting like, we got to do this right now. This was obviously <laughs> coordinated. Well, we don't know if it's it never. all happened at the same time. It wasn't like people going about their day suddenly hearing about this and deciding to comment on it. It was a, a flurry of activity in a brief period of time. It was Tony saying, it's okay now, go ahead. But here uh, is Soraya on Twitter, or X. Is it still Twitter? Do we call it Twitter still? We're calling it Twitter, because that's what it is. The narrative going around is very... It's, a, dir it's a dirty whore is what it is. Now, he's just ruined the whole neighborhood, but we're going to call it Twitter. Yeah, it's not even retweets anymore. Anytime you go to retweet something, it now says repost. So they took that out. But anyway, here's Soraya. We're tied to the whipping post. The narrative going around is very disheartening, considering someone says that they want the best for women's wrestling, but buries it in a number of tweets. I will say, being in this company close to a year, my favorite part is being with the girls in the locker room. They uplift, support, and laugh with each other every week and only want the best for one another. We hype each other up. We buy each other wrestling gear sometimes just as a little surprise. We text each other daily and we are there <laughs> as a shoulder too. This is one of the best locker rooms I've been in and I refuse to let people twist it to be otherwise. Love you all with a little heart emoji, so there's Soraya. Any comments from Fornetta? I thought it was Soraya. It's one or the other. Is it, it Soraya or Soraya? Well, you say tomato and I say floozy. Well, it, it certainly sounds like that, that she has an opposing viewpoint of Lufisto's. But certainly there's, there's got to be some conflicting emotions. Certainly one of the other girls has admitted there's problems. That previous tweet from Soraya was 9, 10 p.m. 9, 22 p.m., Madison Rain. Madison Rain's a coach there, right? Did Madison Rain get the job that Lufisto thought she was getting? Possibly. She is a coach, I believe. But timeline-wise, I think that's... It was last year, but anyway. Madison Rain. Every Wednesday, I leave my daughter and husband and get on a plane. Every Wednesday, I fly somewhere hundreds of miles away from my dad who is battling stage four cancer. And every Wednesday, I walk into a locker room of women who motivate, uplift, and genuinely enjoy one another with an emoji of a fist and 100. So she's all in. Now here's Renee Moxley Good. Renee Moxley Good? What time was this? This was 8.59 p.m., so before Soraya. We have an incredible women's division that all look out for and support each other. I've never seen it be anything other than a safe space for a bunch of kick-ass women that all want to see each other and all of AEW shine to their full potential. If they're kick-ass women, why do they need a safe space? Women hating women is a real dusty take. <laughs> what does Dusty have to do with this? He didn't even book most of the women. Yeah, I don't know if she knew Dusty, but let's uh, go to the next one here. Nyla Rose on Twitter. This is 9.27 p.m. One person's personal experience is not A, the gospel truth, B, facts, or C, anything but one perspective influenced by personal experience and interaction. I'm sad, hurt, annoyed, angry, and honestly a little betrayed. Funny thing is, 
It's not by a single woman in our locker room. Well, that was actually pretty profound. Very good job there from Nyla Rose. Yeah, but everybody likes to beat around the bush. I don't know whether that was assembly I should have used in this. Not in that locker room. But not in that, not locker, in that room. locker room. But it, but they're beating around it because nobody would just come out and say, hey, this girl named Lufisto, she's full of shit, and here's why. They're just they're being flowery about it. 8.46 p.m., Ty of Valkyrie. The narrative that all the AEW women hate each other is quite frankly annoying. I've been there for five months, and everyone, from the second I walked in that building, has been nothing but supportive, hyping each other up, and badass. 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 Stop pinning women against each other. It's getting old. And then uh, someone responded, Thunder Rosa received a lot of bullying. You don't have the need to speak for others. And Taya Valkyrie responded to that. Where did I say I was speaking for others? Laugh out loud. I'm speaking on my experience. If you, and in caps, the entire IWC <laughs> can express how they feel. What does the international wrestling cartel have to do with this? I'm pretty sure I can express mine. Penelope Ford. Jumped Hello to Norm Connors, by the way. 8.56 p.m., Penelope Ford. Someone tweeted out, we don't need Bully Bunny, but we definitely need Penelope back. <laughs> bully Bunny. Penelope said, my best friend is far from being a bully. Wait a minute, I thought, I thought the bunny and Penelope used to fight each other. Am I thinking of two other bunnies and Penelopes? No, they're on the same team. I think they're aligned together. Well, I've, I, I haven't checked to see if they got their alignment done lately. After that, Lufisto jumped into the fray. Good that everyone at AEW got the memo to write as much shit on me as possible <laughs> so I could be seen in, so I can be in scene as a waste of a human being not worth living, especially people who have never had a single conversation with me. Even better to see people I never did anything wrong being so desperate to get a job, jumping on the bandwagon. Soon I'll see you hypocrites be part of a Be A Star and Mental Health Matters advertisements acting like you care. Enjoy your paychecks and keep on stabbing each other in the back pretending this is normal. <laughs> I can only hope that your hate towards me will get you to finally fucking work together for the best of women's wrestling now that problems have been called out. So many are miserable, frustrated, and will whisper their anger, but never will stand and speak up. I wanted to leave this world knowing women's wrestling was better. It was for a while, but not anymore. The sad part is, you accept it without saying a word. It is what it is. What a waste. You know, if somebody was that motivated to cure world hunger, we might get somewhere. She's pissed off. Last night, 10.05 p.m., someone tweeted to Britt Baker, you deadass the last person that should be saying anything. And Britt Baker responded, and why is that? Because what you read on Twitter must be true? I love AEW, and I love our women's locker room. Big Swole, we haven't heard from her in a while. I don't understand this one at all. At 10.07 p.m. Now, wait a minute. She was mad. She said, hey, Tony smoked my weed, and I thought we were friends, and then he fired me. Well, at 10.07 p.m., she tweeted out an image of Princess Diana smirking, I believe from her Martin Bashir interview, and it says, the chicken is lovely. <sighs> I guess she's just enjoying the show. Soraya's back. 10.20 p.m. Also. Ruby is an angel who is adored by everyone. I'm so grateful for Wait her. Wait I thought she was a heel who was pissing people off. Well, they're on the same side, at least. I'm so grateful for her and Tony Storm. Uh, then someone at 1025 tweeted to Britt Baker, and Thunder Rosa, are the claims that you wanted to shoot on her true? Is Lufisto lying about that? Is what she said true or false? Britt Baker says, or Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, false. Thunder called the meeting to discuss multiple personal issues. There was no meeting to shoot on her. These are salacious Twitter rumors. 
I'm sure when she's ready, she can help clarify. And let's take a break there for a second. Well, yeah, I think somebody is because of it was worded in an unwieldy fashion. And then fans are thinking, shoot, shoot, they're going to beat her up. I think they're talking shoot, tell her off in a some meeting where they were going to shoot. Right. With her and tell her off, or she was going to tell him. Somebody was going to get told to fuck off. Now, Jamie Hayter may have shot on her. Jamie Hayter, yeah, kick. after that fucking drop kick to the back of the head. <laughs> that would have, again, that would have lit anybody up. No, but to what Britt Baker just said, you know, everyone, unfortunately right now, everyone just runs with assumptions about whatever's going on there. Thunder Rosa, in the midst of all this, hasn't said anything. It would probably help in this matter if she did come out and say something, but... I don't know if I don't know if anything could be helped by any of these people speaking anymore, but I'm here for the entertainment. Go ahead. Well, a little earlier in the evening, 8.51 p.m., let's go back in the time machine, responding to Ty of Valkyrie, Ty Nara Mello Guevara, better known as Ty Mello. Ty Mello Conti? All of this with four claps and a smiley face. I believe that's Wait, equal man. to five stars on Dave's uh, scale there. I thought it was two claps and a Ric Flair. I never saw a group like ours. It makes me mad that people try to say shit. They don't know anything about it. Keep talking because we will keep working hard and shining. Ruby Soho issued a statement, 11.13 p.m., and that's actually what she wrote. My only statement, and here's what it is. The women in the AEW locker room don't just claim to be in support of women's wrestling. They show it. Whether you see it or not, the ones who don't ask for credit after they stand in gorilla and cheer for two women who beat each other up to a pulp for your amusement? The ones who lend an enhancement talent their knee pads because they forgot theirs at home? Oh. The ones who sit in the locker room with a sobbing peer for an hour to console her when she's having a bad day? Those women are silent heroes. Have you ever wanted to console a friend that was sobbing because he was having a bad day, Brian? You know, when I was in summer camp, one of my friends got really fucked up playing bloody knuckles, uh, and his knuckles were all bloody, and I remember he was sobbing for a while, and I felt bad. I, felt, I did. But anyway, back to this. Did you want to sit with him for an hour and hear him talk about it? No, I kind of wanted to cheer him up so we would want to have fun with everyone else, but let's go back to this. Just because the voices you hear are the loudest doesn't mean those voices are speaking the truth. And then... I don't know who this is. Harley Cameron. Oh, that's the blonde from QT's group. That's QTV girl. Well, 11.06 p.m., she jumped in. As one of the newest women on the AEW roster, I have been welcomed, encouraged, inspired by my entire locker room and the entire company. I love going to work every week. You know, what's really disturbing, from, from 9 o'clock until after 11 at night, these people are not in their homes, watching television, playing with a dog, reading a good book, blissfully asleep. They're on fucking Twitter because they had to be reading about this shit in order to fucking write about it. Well, again, though, I know it's Twitter and it's easy to look down on it just because of that. But if there's a locker room issue and let's say there's 15 women who are in that locker room every single week, all year, and that is how clicks form. I'm not saying there's not a Britt Baker click. I'd be surprised if there weren't. Every wrestling locker room ever yeah. had clicks. That's what happens. Yeah. So it's probably hard to walk in and people think you're going to be a coach and they're like, what the fuck? Like, who? <laughs> so who knows what's going on with this? That's the point of it. So you could understand Lufisto's perspective. Outside of whatever the Thunder Rosa issue is, you could also understand the rest of the locker room's perspective, having someone who's an outsider come and say these things. Here's, once again, Penelope Ford. Responding to the Ruby Soho statement with an emoji with crying, a crying face, real tears. These women were here for me when I had a miscarriage, and that information was shared in our locker room and never left our locker room. My husband and I told our story when we were ready. If all of this isn't a supportive locker room, then I don't know what is. And that's what I mean. There's a difference between... Lufisto and these and all the women in the locker room could both be right at the same time because yeah. of their different perspectives. I just miss the old days where if people didn't like each other in the locker room, they just hit each other with something and had a big fight and got over it or quit or whatever instead of goddamn whining about it 
like everybody else cares about. There, there are people with fucking family members and goddamn on an iron lung. I don't think they care whether the fucking women's locker room is fighting with each other or not. Oh, lordy, lordy, the twister's coming. Well, here's another tweet. This is, uh, I'm assuming this is an independent wrestler. I'm not too familiar with him. Judas Judd Cassidy. Remem oh, Judas Judd Cassidy. Remem he's, he's, uh, he's, I think he's Sean and David Cassidy's little brother. The last uh, emission of Shirley Jones and, and Jack Cassidy. The Judas of the family? Yeah. Interesting. Well, there's your new gimmick, Judas Judd. But here's uh, what he said. Remember Daphne? Remember Hana Kimura? The AEW locker room all tweeting at the same time is fucking disgusting. Ganging up on Lufisto for her to look bad only because she told her story is not okay. I don't want to lose her. Please don't let history repeat itself. And, you know, unfortunately, that is one of the things about social media. You know, if you go out there and you say, we see it all the time, you go out there and you say something bad about something as simple as the wrestling or the wrestlers that some people like, that's when you start hearing, go kill yourself, you're a piece of shit, you're worthless, fuck your family. And unfortunately for Lufisto coming out there talking about what her truth is, we assume, with the AEW locker room, that gets this feedback, not just from the women wrestlers all doing this at the same time, but I'm sure she's hearing it from the fans. Well, but at the same time, a lot of people tell me that I'm just a horrible fucking human being, that I should be burned alive at the stake or shot into space on a fucking rocket. And I basically tell them, well, I'm sorry, but I've got to fucking disagree with your ass. <laughs> I don't think that at all. So fuck you. So I think if she, if she wanted to tell all these people what she thought of them, she has done that. And she doesn't need to listen to anybody else saying, well, fuck you, well, fuck you. So we're even. You fuck me and I'm fucking you. Well, finally, here's uh, the last one we'll go through. This is from 9.07 p.m. last night. The world champion Maxwell Jacob Friedman, trademark. Wait a minute now. I didn't know he was allowed to dress in the women's locker room. This makes so much sense. Uh, Chris Statlander and Britt Baker, DMD, both liked this tweet, apparently. If you listen to miserable people who never made it in this sport, that's not exactly the brightest thing to do. Use your brain. If someone's been in professional wrestling for over a decade, and you find them to be talented but they've never truly panned out, there's a reason for it. One, lack of talent. Two, difficulty to work with. Three, delusional. <laughs> Just to name a few. People love to talk ill of companies and will say things like, I'm the only person who's brave enough to speak up. When in reality, the only reason you're spewing bullshit is because you are aware deep down you aren't going to make it. So what's the harm in spewing reckless lies and trying to hurt hardworking, talented people on your way down to obscurity? We have an amazing women's locker room. Sorry, not sorry. The boys got away with words. And also, does he have the special super-duper Twitter? Because that sounded like a whole lot longer than 240 characters or hey, whatever. did you guys see this tweet? It sounds like that Maxine who keeps showing up in the locker room every week. <laughs> <laughs> I thought something was off about her and her beard. So, want to get to the women's division in general, but just to sum up this, I don't even know how you, what you say about this, we never really see something like this where you know, like a former football player says like, that team sucks and everyone jumps on Twitter within an hour and is like, fuck you! Like, we never see that. What do you think of this? Would any of these women have done this around the same time if Tony hadn't given the okay? Should they be doing this? And, I mean, what are your general thoughts to wrap up this whole Lufisto thing? Well, it may very well be her experience, as you said, and all of those things can be true. So not saying she was a liar. She thinks that a lot of them are bitches. But when, and, and I don't even know if Tony played any part in this. I think at, at whatever time that these tweets from Lufisto or the interview was aired or the inter that they actually saw it and started texting each other. That's probably what they all, one of them probably saw it. And here we go. Well, I'll text Sue and I'll text, you know, whatever. And then they all jump on it. That to me shows either there's an element of truth 
in what Lufisto was saying relate relating to her and they wanted to jump on that like no there's not because they're too defensive or there's just an element of truth to something in there that they wanted to jump on because they sure got really fucking defensive and a whole group of them so maybe she struck a nerve with something that she said so I you know I mean does anybody really think that any of those people would give a fuck to ask Tony Khan first before they make veiled references to people they're not naming. They don't ask Tony Khan the important shit, like should I actually have a fucking good match or not? Or what should I do in the match you're telling me to have? I don't think there's any way they go on Twitter without Tony's permission. Not right now. I, I, Maybe I, a couple I, of years ago, but not right now. I, I think, think so. they were sitting there on their couches at home and their snuggly blankies eating bonbons, and they all got started texting each other because they're all the 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 in the social media influencers. And they said, "Well, we'll just fucking shut this woman down." And it just it again. It sounds I don't know why MJF had to jump in unless he's trying to get laid. Then I understand, actually, that's Smart probably move. now that I've, I've really, I've just realized what he did here. He's the only guy that would possibly give a shit about what's going on in the women's locker room, but he's doing it particularly from a, this will make every single one of them want to blow me fucking standpoint. Well, we don't know about that, but let's talk about another issue. Because again, we can only talk so far about the Lufisto women's locker room Thunder Rosa stuff because we don't know everything. But the bigger issue, which is the state of the women's division there. WWE has top flight women who are amongst the top flight wrestlers in the entire industry. Rhea Ripley's as good as anyone in the business. Bianca Belair, Charlotte, they're excellent. There are other people at that level, and it seems like they may be able to train other people to get there one day. They also have a lot of people that aren't at that level, but I don't know if they have too many people on the main roster other than maybe a Maxine Dupree that are as bad as so many of the women wrestlers we've seen in AEW. From Britt Baker on down. We never really got to see what Jade could do and couldn't do because she lost the match and disappeared and she only worked short squash matches mostly before then. Thunder Rosa could work. She's got heat with everyone. Hater can work. Hater's out of action. M most of the women that can work are on the smaller, thinner, or plainer side in terms of personality or whatever. And the, the women that look like Something, stars, names, have some other attributes, are basically deer on ice. So you have some women there who are not ready for TV, but they're on TV. And that doesn't seem to be a problem that's going to be fixed. It just seems to be something they expand into. So you have that, but then the other problem is, while fans are holding up signs, or one fan holding up a sign, book the women better, and you hear from some people online, which is a small audience, saying, more women's matches. We want more of them. I said it from the beginning. Why did AEW have a women's division? It shouldn't be an arbitrary thing like, okay, we're starting up. We need a women's division. Early on, they said they were going to pay the women the same as the men. I don't know if that's still the case. But the people that think that it should be 50-50, you have to give them the same amount of time on the show as the men, they lose the viewers, those segments. Yeah. It's not just because of the bad booking. Well, and let's not just signal out or single out AEW every company now. It's like they're constitutionally obligated to have a women's division. And especially for smaller companies, not only with smaller talent budgets, you might be able to afford one star for the money you pay eight indie girls. Um, but also, that's what you're getting is because there's not as many talented women as there are talented guys. That's just a fact. Can't change that. And as a result, the bigger companies get all the, the women that really have the, the talent, and the smaller companies just have women that have been trained to wrestle. And the reason why that the WWE their women's division is more solid than the AEW division is because they've grown their own, they've trained them. That's the one place where the performance center has really shined because it takes longer and more effort and more instruction to train for whatever reason 
women to really be good than it does guys. Now, of course, there's tons more guys trying, so you naturally weed out a lot of the fucking guys that can't get it to begin with early on, but that's just the fact. The fact is there's not as many good girls as guys. It's harder to train a girl to be good than it is a guy, and the bigger companies are going to have a disproportionate amount of the most talented girls leaving the smaller companies with eh, indies. And that's what AEW got because of who was advising Tony from the start. They got mostly all indie girls. And still, most of them have come from the indies. They've never been through a comprehensive and repetitious training program like the Performance Center. And then they've got a couple of ex-WWF names, and let's face it, you know, Soraya was retired for five years or whatever and wasn't really Mildred Burke to begin with, and Ruby ain't bad, but, you know, in, in with some of these girls she is. Like you said, Jamie Hayter's good, and... You know, and Statlander has potential. And, and Statlander, you know, from the Indies, but she's got the size and she's looked good, but she's been derailed a year and a half of the past two years with injuries. But yeah, that's what that comes from, is if AEW, the number two company, can't get a solid women's roster up and down the roster, then how are Ring of Honor or MLW or Impact or whatever? They're not. And that's what everybody's gone crazy. And they think that it's a service to women's wrestling to have a 50% of the time be to the, with the women and the women's matches. It's, it's a service to the women that are getting jobs. It's not a service to women's wrestling because then you see more bad women's wrestling. And it's not a service to the fans because then they're seeing more bad women's wrestling. And that's what I've said from the start. It's an attraction and you get the three or four top girls, and then you fucking rotate around them, and after a few years, you get more top girls, but you don't have... It can't be 50-50, because 90% of the top talent in the ring is male, and 10% of the women. But if you have it 50-50, you're losing 40% of the guys that are better than 40% of the girls, if you see my... And that's Steiner math for you. Well, that is the question. Those women segments, the one that lose viewers at the end of the show, typically the same spot in the show every week, do those segments... Would a segment with someone from the mid-card, with the Hardy brothers or something, would that do as good or better? Because if it's automatically going to do worse, and you're jamming... That amount on your show, people are asking you to jam more of it. There has to, at some point, be a reason for it, other than, you know, it's an arbitrary thing. Okay, let's do it. it I mean, on the, the, the girls' match that does usually lose viewers on Dynamite is part of a reflection of the show. Because they see so much, and they realize they're not going to see a lot more that they really want to see, and then they put the girls' match on, and it kind of, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, but on Collision or on SmackDown or on whatever show that actually doesn't hemorrhage viewers through the course of it, if you've got a Statlander or you've got a Charlotte or you've got a Ripley or you've got a, any quality girl that you want to make a star, and there's so many, as you said, in WWE, Bianca and on and on and you put them in a good match that doesn't overstay its welcome and they get a good win, that's not going to fucking lose viewers. It's when you put random, and you concentrate on one or two or three that are on the show all the time, and the other girls are the ones that are putting them over. And if people just don't see a random girls tag or girls match with Girls from YouTube or girls from Dark or girls that we see every once in a while. Or if it's the goddamn, the outsiders thing, you had three girls all wearing green with green hair, spray paint and other people green, and everybody was running in, and that many people involved, that's another excuse to tune out. The marks, like, you know, that are on 
spectrums of things like Russo and Tony Khan, they think that means people will have to watch. But to wrestling fans, it means here's eight or nine miscellaneous girls running around and running in and painting people, and we don't give a fuck because it's goddamn just chaos. So if it's focused, you can have, and you and you have a disciplined concept of the girls you want to get over and the girls that you want to use to put them over, then it doesn't have to be a tune-out segment. But just random shit with any one of 20 fucking people, that's the segment that everybody thinks, well, we can skip this. Well, we'll see what happens, and we'll stay on top of this wonderful story, the AEW Women's Division drama, and... uh where are we going? It's your show. It's my show? Thank God. 